Okay, and take off the carburetor. I'm gonna first drain off the gas tank. So I'll take my five sixteenths. I'm gonna take out these three bolts that are on the gas tank. Okay, and then I'll take off the tip stick. I'll lift up on the tank. And I'll put my dipstick back in so nothing gets inside here. And next, there's probably about a quarter tank of gas left, so I shouldn't get much spilling out. So I'll just take off this fuel clip here. And I'll just remove the line. So I'm going to shake it up because there is probably debris in here grass and shavings of something. I've just got my hand over the line. The exit. And we'll see. Okay, well, two indications of having bad gas. Dark yellow color like this. And at the bottom, got lots of grass shavings and probably dirt. So, I'll probably put some fresh gas in the tank a couple times, rinse it out, keep on pouring it in here so the tank gets cleaned out. Put the cap on. And I'll just shake it. Alright, a little more came out on that one. I'll do it one more time. But I didn't get a whole lot on on that last one. But as you can see, I did get quite a bit. All the dirt's in the bowl. Yeah. And to take off the carburetor, I'll remove two bolts. One on this side and one on the other side. They're both a quarter inch. Alright, next I'm going to remove is these two bolts here. They're both for 3 eighths. Alright, since I can't get in here with the ratchet out of space, I'm going to use a uh, Phillips. It has a Phillips head on it. Okay, and this should all just come loose. like that. And now you're going to want to take off your bolt that holds on your throttle cable. And before I do this, I'm going to make a mark on the side here so I know where I'm putting it when I put it back. That's because it's kind of like an adjustment. It's not too hard to figure out on your own, but I'm just going to make a mark just in case. And you don't have to remove it all the way. Just enough to where you can get the cable out. Okay, in here, there are some linkages. Alright, the one with the spring goes on the top lever, right here. This one that... This one right here, the spring. That goes right on that little lever. And then the one without the spring, up there, above it, that goes on the throttle butterfly. So, I have to remember that. All right, I've decided to take off this throttle plate on here. I think it'll be easier to work with if this is off. And the ones that go on here have the little lock washer on here. And these are 5 sixteenths. Yeah, this plate just comes off, and this is the hole it goes in. This hole here, facing this way. All right, and so to take off the whole carburetor, 
I'm going to take off the air filter box to get easier room over here so I can see what I'm doing. And now that I have room, I can see where my linkages are. The spring one that goes on this little lever here goes on the bottom hole on the governor arm. And the one that goes right in the butterfly goes on the top. And now that that cover's off, I can take the whole thing and take this off. Alright, so I'm going to take this off the governor arm. That goes on the top hole. The one that goes on this butterfly goes on the top hole of the governor arm. So I can that I can take this off. And then all that's connected now is the fuel line. And I'll use a flathead screwdriver to pry this line off here. I believe this is plastic on here. Yeah, it is. Okay. And now you've got the carburetor completely off. It's very dirty. I'm going to clean this all up before I even take it apart so I don't get any of that on the inside. Alright, so here it is. I, uh, Cleaned it up a little bit with the air compressor. So I got a lot of the stuff off of it. And now I'm going to open it up. So first thing you need is a half inch socket on your ratchet. And just I'm going to drain it inside of here. Because I'm going to be work cleaning the hearts inside of my magnetic tray. I just take off the bowl. Might take a bit if it's old. Set this down. And let's see how the bowl is. Well, it's not too bad. I can see that the varnish is starting to take its toll on the bowl. It's starting to stick to it on the edges. Okay, next, you want to remove this little o-ring on here. This doesn't look too brittle for being as old as it is. Okay, now you want to remove the float pin. This, one, this one's a little harder to get you than some. I have gloves on, so I use needle nose. To remove the float. And the needle. Alright, and to start, I'm going to clean up my parts. First, I'll clean up my bowl a little bit. You want to shake the float, see if there's any gas in it, That's to, so I can check if there's any leaks. This one seems good. I'm also going to check out the needle. Looks good. I'll just wipe it off with paper towel. Take off the gasket. And then I will clean out this high speed needle. As far as I can see, there is only one hole in this high speed needle here. It's just one on the side. I'm just going to use the little pin on this needle. Make sure there's nothing in here. Now it's pretty common to have your center leg be covered with varnish, if it had varnish in it, so you can clean that up too. Then I'm going to shoot some uh, carb cleaner down the emulsion tube. Something might have came out with that. There's also some holes inside the carburetor. You may want to clean up. You 
and there's another hole for the primer bulb. You also want to check to make sure that you have no clogs inside your inlet. So I'm going to put the straw right on the seat, spray through. Alright, there's two holes on your center leg, one on each side. You always want to make sure that they're not blocked. I'm just using the pin on our needle here. Now clean up this little ridge where the bull o-ring will go. That doesn't seem very clean. There's a lot of either corrosion or I think it's just dirt around it. There's also another hole here that's going to come out of a welch plug. That needs to be cleaned. Alright, everything's cleaned up. But all these parts look good. The o-ring and the gasket here. But if you move them, this one's a little stiff, not too bad. I would I would probably use it if it was just that. But this gasket here is just completely stiff. Can't even bend it. If I do, it'll probably break. So I'm gonna get a carb kit for this, and I'm just in the middle of taking out the seat. I'm doing that with a paper clip. There it is. A little paper clip with a bend in it like that. All right, I'm finally back with my new carb kit. It's a 631 021B. Alright, when you get it, you just want to put your needle inside of your little pin here. And since I don't have the Tecumseh tool, I do want to get it, but I don't have it right now. I'll be using an 1164th drill bit. So, here's my old, these are my old parts, these are my new ones. What you want to have is this side with a little ridge, the little ring. You want that side to face down first. Alright, so you put it that side facing down so that you don't see the ridge then you take your 1164 through a bit you press it down the reason why I'm using the 1164 is so that it goes down even and all the way alright that one's in then I want to take my new needle my new inlet needle and Alright, you want the open end of this pin to face towards where the air filter goes, which in this case, it's on this side, so I'm going to face it going that way on the on the float here, and I'll just drop it in the inlet. Just want to put it in there, and then just line up your pin. And then... What I always do is make sure that this is even. You can either use the Tecumseh tool to see the gap between here and here, or you can just let it look if it's level or not. And this one's about level. And next, you're going to want to take your new parts, so your new O-ring for your bowl, and push it around your carburetor. It should have a little bit of resistance when you're putting it on. That means it's fitting on, so it's creating a good seal. And then you want to take the higher side when it's facing upwards and line that up with the side where the pin is in the inlet and make sure it goes unevenly all the way around so it should fit on snugly like that that means it's sealing good okay this carburetor is a little bit different this bull nut gasket is a bit tighter on the screw than other ones that I've worked on so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get it on I'm just going to screw it on the threads Alright, so I've just threaded it on. It wasn't too hard, so now it fits on here. Then you want to take your bowl nut and screw it into the carburetor, leaving this bowl in the same position. Then you want to take a socket, it's a half inch, and then tighten up the bowl nut. Not too tight, just tight enough to make a good seal. Like that. And the parts you have left after using this carb kit are these here. The only one I would keep is this inlet needle here. All the rest are either old or slightly damaged or dried up like this one. Let's just see if I can break it or not if I bend it. Yep, I bent a little bit and it's, it broke. 